folks, welcome back to Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again. Hey folks, welcome back to Indaba Africa. This is Chris once again. Last year for International Women's Day, early stages of my channel and what I was trying to do here in Chris Y in Africa, I did a video about IDB Wells. And that was the only video I did focusing on women last year. Thought I'd try something a little different this year and throughout the month. Bring you videos about women who've inspired me as I grew up, as I matured. And these are women largely from history. Although some are recent, most of them are for history. So let me start with one of them. And let me read you a little narrative to set the stage before I actually tell you about this woman. All right. So earlier, 18-year-old. Martinus Ustoisen had ridden through the mass of about 1,500 Zulu soldiers to collect gunpowder from Willem Pretorius's wagon two kilometers away. The ammunition he brought back had enabled the besieged trekkers to hold the Zulu at bay until Siliers and his men arrived to help. More and more Boers joined Siliers' party. The Zulu warriors turned to face this new attack as Siliers and his men charged at the Zulu. With shouts of, Bulala, Bulala, the Zulus charged at the mounted Boers. The Boers fired then retreated to reload, then charged and fired again. More and more Boers attacked by the sound of gunfire arrived. Attracted by the gun, sound of gunfire arrived. Gradually, the Boers edged closer to the Zulu ranks. The Zulus turned and fled. That afternoon, the Zulu army finally ceased their attack on the trekkers and retreated, taking thousands of cattle, sheep, and goats with them. The surviving four trekkers transformed their wagons and tents into emergency hospitals to care for the wounded and many men women and children staggered about aimlessly in shock. A number had lost the power of speech and some would never regain it. The four trekker camps had been demolished. Many of the wagons were smoldering wood and steel husk or lay on their sides, their canopies torn and their floorboards dripping with blood. The grass around the wagons was blackened and slimy with the trekkers blood and feathers from ripped cushions and pillows floating idly in the breeze. Among the piles of dead, the odd survivor was found for instance, Johanna van der Meve and Margareta Prinsloo had more than 20 stab wounds apiece, but lived. Wow. 20 stab wounds. Well, who am I talking about, folks? Johanna van der Meve. Johanna Cornelia van der Meve, born on the 7th of March, 1825, who passed away on the 15th of January, 1888, was a four-tracker heroine. She survived the Wienen Massacre, which I was just referring to and during an impi attack on her trekking party on the 17th of February, 1838. Despite suffering more than 20 Asagai wounds, and Asagai is a spear, 20 wounds at the age of 13. Now, where did this all happen? In what is today KwaZulu-Natal, near the town of Wienen, which is a Dutch word which means weeping, or Afrikaans word these days, which means weeping. This all came about because the four trekkers had moved into the Natal province, or Natal area, and approached the Zulu kingdom. King Dingane offered to sign a treaty with them, allowing them to have land if only they would recover some cattle stolen by another tribe. They did return the cattle, and then they were invited back for a big celebration. During the celebration, the king is reported to have said, grab the white devils. Now, they were forced to leave their weapons outside the compound. They walked in unarmed. So Pete Retief and uh, around 100 of his followers went there for this big ceremony. Of course, these are all the major leaders of these trekking parties. Grab the white devils. And with that, they proceed to kill them one by one, including Pete Retief's sons, and he was the last to die, disemboweled. And they left them lying there. After this, he sent his impies to kill the remaining four trekkers who were camped at Doringkop, Blaukrans, Moodsprit, Renbogsprit, and other sites along the Bushman River. This is all in KwaZulu-Natal, as I mentioned, near the town, the present-day town of Wien. These attacks led to the deaths of 41 men, 56 women, and 185 children among the four trekkers. But the four trekkers weren't alone. They had allies and friends and co-workers who traveled with them. 250 to 252 Khoi Khoi and Basutu were also slaughtered in this attack, bringing the total casualties on the side of the four trekkers and their allies to between 532 to 534. Quite deadly, quite a blood, bloody massacre. Now this led, of course, to the eventual battle in December of 1838 at what's known as the Battle of Blood River, during which a four tracker column of 474 trekkers fought against 15 to 20,000 Zulu. 
and at least 3,000 Zulu were killed in this battle known as the Battle of Blood River. The heroine we're talking about here, young Johanna van der Meve, who survived 20 stab wounds, miraculously survived this and lived a life. She later married Hendrik Frederick Delport, and she had seven sons by him, despite the fact that she was permanently crippled by the attack. She died at the age of 62 and was buried in Rueville. Now, there is a ox wagon in the historic uh, Great Trek Centenary Commemoration Trek, named after her, as well as one of the Daphne-class submarines, the only one surviving to this day. The South African government ordered three Daphne-class submarines from France back in 1967, and this was the last one delivered. It was christened the Johanna van der Meva. It was renamed by the ANC government in 1999, and today sits in Simonstown as a museum one of the three original diesel-powered South African Daphne-class submarines. And there you have it, folks. Johanna Cornelia van der Meva, a heroine, and someone who, of incredible bravery who survived quite an ordeal to live a productive life and produce seven sons and continue on the family after her death. I'll be bringing more stories about women, heroines, and groundbreakers throughout Women's History Month here in March of 2021. But I wanted to start it off with this first one here and share with Johanna van der Meve with you, a figure very few people actually know of and one who's worth remembering. Thanks a lot, folks. I appreciate your time, your patronage, and your support. Have a lovely day.